Welcome to Acts 242 Take 2, a quick five minute or so take on what was shared on Sunday. And this week we looked at the Apostles' teaching and one of the things I know is that New Testament teaching is so different from that of the Old Testament. You see in the Old Testament everything is so precisely laid out by God himself when it comes to how people should worship and live their lives. So if you've ever read the book of Leviticus for example, you see that God lays out in detail what the priests should wear, how they function, what they do, and what the place of worship should be like, the offerings and worship people should bring, and so on. And the detail is both precise and also repetitive, because the narrative tends to go, this is how you should make this or do this, and then lots of detail follows, and then this is what they did. And more or less, it's an exact repetition of all the detail we've had before. There were craftsmen who were to make the priest's vestments and the various adornings and, tabernacle and, and decoration for the tabernacle. And it's in connection with their calling and work that we have one of the first specific references to the empowering of the Holy Spirit in the scriptures. Exodus chapter 31. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, and I've filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all kinds of craftsmanship to create artistic designs for work in gold, in silver and in bronze. Now the Holy Spirit was not given so that men like Bezalel could be individualistic. His empowering was so that they could carry out the plans and purposes of God to the letter. No individuality, no deviation. Everything had to be done exactly as God had detailed. The worship, the sacrifices, the service, all spoke of who God is and how his people were to relate to him. All dictated by God, literally, to Moses with the strict instruction repeated on numerous occasions to not depart from the plans even in the smallest detail. Have you ever wondered this? Why doesn't God tell us clearly how we are to do church? He certainly seemed to spend so much time and effort doing that in the Old Testament to the nation of Israel. And everything there is so prescriptive. It's laid out. And then we come to the New Testament. Well, let's face it. There's a marked absence, really, of how to do church. Very little in the Gospels from, God, from Jesus himself. Lots of churches being established in the Acts, but little about the churches themselves. And then the majority of the letters, mainly written by Paul, are to churches or to church leaders. And yes, there is teaching about church, but it tends to be responding to issues or problems in the church, rather than there being a clear setting out of what to do and how to do it. There's certainly no manifesto or blueprint. So how could God be so prescriptive and precise in the Old Testament, and by comparison seeming to be so lacking in the New Testament, in terms of telling us what to do. Acts 2.42. Now, although it's in the same chapter as the day of Pentecost, I don't really think that Peter announced on that day that this is what the church would be like. Instead, Acts 2.42 is a description of what emerged in the months and years that followed. These were four distinctives that marked the emerging church and which subsequently many have said are four important characteristics of church life and worship. So, we get few prescriptions of what church should be like, but we get lots of different and partial descriptions of what church life was like, and what Christian living should be like. Salvation was through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but this new life was totally dependent on the coming of the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ that was to be resident in the hearts of those New Testament and subsequent believers who were going to learn what it meant to walk in the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. They would learn it as individuals and they would learn it together in community as church. This was no more the one-size-fits-all pattern of the Old Testament, the detailed set of regulations that must be observed. There was now free access to the Father through the Son the liberty and freedom that the Holy Spirit brings and the power to live a resurrection life of victory. But equally, this was no free-for-all, anything-goes community. Through the Apostles' teaching, 
God's people would learn what life in the Spirit was like, what life in Christian communion and fellowship should be like, and so on. They were to grow and be shaped by this teaching. You see, the Holy Spirit can work most and achieve most in our lives when we're face to face with God's Word. As we see the immensity of what God has done for us through the cross, and we see from Scripture the response that God calls us to make in every part of our lives. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God.